at an outward level has an inward reality. And for many of us who became uh, Muslim, who embraced the deen of Islam, we experience our own internal life at all time. We experience, for example, when we turn away from sin, our own internal rajah. And uh, this, I believe, is uh, what happened to me. Now, another thing I'd like to mention is that uh, whatever we do, whatever decisions we make, uh, whatever major changes in life we undergo is played out on the scene of history. It's played out on the scene of history. Whatever troubles we experience, whatever pleasures we experience, are played out on the scene of history. We are not merely individual actors. We are actors in a collectivity. Imagine, for example, every one of us we make a decision in the morning to get up and prepare ourselves for going out to work. We all basically end up doing the same thing. All of us. You know, you get up, you pray, you brush your teeth, you take a shower, you change your clothes, you have breakfast, and you go out. Even down to the breakfast itself, there are lots of commonalities. When we decide on our own to put on our clothes, and we say, this is my individual choice, you go out there and you see people who have decided to put on the same clothes you decide to put on. What is in the case is that we are acting collectively. At the same time, we are thinking individually. When we are able to recognize and to be able to identify the social movement or trend that we find ourselves in, that is the time that we can influence those social movements and trends. That is the time you can decide that everybody is going north, you're going south. And you take a whole lot of people with you too. This makes the difference between those who move history and those who are moved by history. So my becoming a Muslim was not just merely an individual choice. It was a, an, an occurrence within a number of occurrences that was a historical phenomenon. For one thing, we know that Islam uh, is the fastest growing religion in the world today. And among the people that Islam is uh, uh, spreading among uh, the African American people of the United States, Canada, and the Caribbean. And this is the fact. One of the reasons why uh, uh, we are, are, are embracing Islam so rapidly is because of all particular objective and subjective historical states in that place. For one thing, uh, the Americas were discovered, or not really discovered, uh, the Europeans found it, but it was founded by many people way before. America was invented by Europe. And the indigenous people of America were massacred in the name of racism and also in the name of what I would call religious chauvinism. Religious chauvinism is a religious attitude where it says, I have the true faith and other faiths have no meaning. Other faiths are not only invalid, but the people who practice those other faiths are not complete human beings. This is the kind of attitude that led to the destruction of the red man in America. It took them hundreds of years 
before they got to America. And one of the reasons why it took them so long is because they didn't even know America existed. They wanted to get to India. They wanted to plunder India. They heard India had lots of great spices and they wanted to get their hands on it. The only problem they had was between Europe and India was Islam. And Islam was powerful. And Islam was to break on a lesser extent just. You couldn't get to India without passing the Muslims. And to pass the Muslims, you have to pay taxes, you have to obey the rules, and so forth and so forth. And these Europeans didn't want to go through the Muslims. So they tried and tried to find a different route to India. One route was all the way down the coast of Africa, all the way on the other side. This was discovered by Vasco da Gama. Another route was when Columbus said, I think we could get to East by going West. We just stayed around here and learned this from the Muslims because at that time they thought that the earth was flat. Sail around here and come up in the back. So we don't have to get to these Muslims. That's why they call them Indians in America today. Because when he got to America, he thought he got to India. So he called them Indians. And they called the people in the Caribbean West Indians. That's where the Indian word came from. He thought he was an Indian. He was completely wrong. When they got to the New Indies, when they got to America, they found themselves technologically more advanced than the Indians, and they proceeded to destroy these people. So it was Islam that was indirectly protecting them. One of the things that they tried to do with the American Indian was they tried to enslave him. The American Indian, however, was a man who was not made to be enslaved. And this went back to his religion. His religion saw the universe as the holy book. He didn't have a book. He didn't have a kitab, a holy book. But the universe was his book. And it's not talks about the, the ayat and the afa and the awadufus. The, the signs of the horizons of our souls. The universe is a book. And therefore, he did not pioneer civilization because civilization alters the environment. And if you alter the environment, and the environment is your book, you are actually erasing things from the book. So he was a man who would live in the, the nature, to camp here, he'd follow the buffalo there, he'd follow the elk somewhere else, you know, and he'd be living in the rhythm of nature. And now somebody came and tried to enslave him. And out of just pure sadness, these people died out. Then one Christian guy came, a Christian bishop. Called, Bas, uh, called Bartholomew de las Casas, because of the, the, the Spaniards first came to the Americas. Bartholomew de las Casas. And he said, you know what? Let's bring the Africans to Africa. And let's bring them to India, uh, sorry, to America. And make them grow sugar cane and so on. That's what the Caribbean is. To grow sugar cane. To make sugar to export back to, uh, to, uh, to Europe. Where did he get this idea from? He got this idea from the Muslims. Because at that time, the Muslims, not living under the rule of Wilaya, were actually enslaving East Africans and putting them to work to grow sugarcane. This is a bad note that us Muslims must recognize about ourselves. Eh? Okay? They got the idea from us. The type of slavery they brought in, however, was the a type of slavery the world had never seen up to this point. It was a type of slavery we would call the slavery that ushered into the modern world. It was what we call industrialized slavery. It was a slavery where a human being was seen as an instrument of production only. It was the first time in history that slaves were used as disposable 
elements of production, you know, disposable. I mean, I can drink water from this glass. You know? Wow. When I'm finished with this glass, it is more expensive for me to wash it and put it down to use it again. It is cheaper for me to throw it in the garbage and use another one. This is disposable. African slaves at one point were disposable items of production. The numbers were so great that it was easy to work from 